Good morning, and welcome to Vision Church of Lockhart. Amen. Amen. And uh, welcome to those that are watching live. And it's a wonderful day. Amen. Amen. Let us be glad and let us rejoice because God is good. Amen. Yes, all the time he is good. Amen. Well, let me get straight to the scripture. Philippians uh, 4, 6. Uh, no, matter, no matter what, you know, we're, we go through, no matter what we're going through, uh, God is there for us. Amen. That's right. Amen. And uh, God fills us with the Holy Spirit and comforts us. Amen. Philippians 4 says this. It says, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So no matter what's going on in, in, in your life today, you know, give him glory. Amen. Because he is going to see you through it. Amen. God is good. Yes. And, uh, let me go on to seven. It says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day you have made. Let us be glad and rejoice no matter what we're going through. We give you honor and we praise you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for new beginnings. All the old has passed away.
Good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to see everybody. Good morning. Those of you watching by streaming, good morning to you as well. Uh, we're all just glad to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. Welcome, pastors, from your travels. We are glad to have you home, but we know you have to go. Time is limited in ministering to your family, and you have to go sometimes. And we're just glad that God brings you home safe and sound, and we're glad you're able to go and minister to your family. Um, Pastor Kyle, he's 100% healed and doing well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for restoring his health. Thank you for restoring him to divine health in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you and praise you, Father, for that. We thank you and praise you for the divine health that you give all of us and the healing that you give us. According to 1 Peter 2.24, by the 39 stripes that Jesus bore on his back was for the healing of our bodies. We've got to grab hold of that. It's not just forgiveness. It's healing. It's salvation. It's many, many things. <clears throat> Too numerous for me to name right now because I don't have it written down. So, anyhow, it's good to see everybody. I'm glad everybody's home, safe, and everything. This weather is absolutely beautiful. People up north are digging in, preparing for blizzards and storms and everything else uh, of enormous size. And we're down here basking in the sun. Ain't that nice? It's nice. A little crisp in the morning. A little sunny during the day. A little bit warm. You have to take your sweater off by the by five, and then it gets cool again. But anyhow, enough of that. Uh, moving right along, we're just glad to be here. We just thank God for the opportunity to be here in His house, to be with the saints and all the angels that are sitting in those empty seats. We just thank you and praise you, God. We, we just thank you and praise you to be here. Uh, we glorify your name. We thank you for this Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got some stuff here we need to cover, so let me move right along. Moving right along. Word of encouragement. Where is it at? You are called to be the voice of His praise, just like we did here a little while ago. We were praising Him, and He likes that. That's like the sweet incense smoke going up into the heavens, and He smells it, and He's like, oh, I praise. 
eyes of my people. Hallelujah. 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 In reality, he's right here. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is right here. He's right here in us. He's in this building. He's in heaven. He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at one time. The devil can't do that. He cannot be everywhere at one time. But God can. And he is everywhere at one time. He's here in our hearts. He's here in your heart. He's in the heavens. He's in all these churches all over the world. Go figure that one. That's where faith comes in. You just got to receive it and accept it and believe it in faith. Hallelujah. So I'm called of, you are called of God to be the voice of his praise. Psalm 66, 8. Let's see what that looks like. Psalm 66, 8. Oh, bless our God. Oh, bless our God, ye people. That's you. And make the voice of his praise to be heard. There you have it. Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise be heard. We're going to uh, study praise here pretty soon, maybe in about a month. And so I encourage you to anticipate that and come and join us for that. Uh, and we'll dig deeper into praising God, which is something that's kind of like it's kind of like going to church. It's what we do. You know, we have church. That's our job here, to have church. And we got that down pat. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks to our pastors. But praise, that's something that's extra. That's part of our worship. It's part of our church service. And it's just part of knowing God and worshiping Him. So Psalm 66, 8 uh, is the reference for that. And um, let's see here. That's the opening. Before we get to tithe and offering, today is Communion Sunday, first Sunday of the month, correct? So think, be thinking about that and be preparing your heart and your mind. Okay, Lord, uh, forgive me. No, you already forgave me. Thank you for forgiving me. Make me, condition me, give me the heart. Give, Make me worthy of receiving your body and blood of Jesus Christ you know cleanse me cleanse my mind and prepare me prepare my heart prepare my mind to receive and that's what we should be thinking about prior to receiving it's not just go up there and get it and go sit down no this is a special significant event the body and blood of Jesus Christ represented by the juice and the bread and it's a big deal it's a big deal not to be taken lightly you are in communion with him him, the one that died on the cross, the one that lives in your heart. It's a big deal. Think about it. Consider it. Prepare yourself for it. That's all I wanted to say. Prepare yourself to receive that Holy Communion. So now, moving right along, tithe and offering. Welcome to the tithe and offering portion of our service. This is where we honor God through our giving, giving of our tithes. And offerings, if you have, if you want to take it uh, above and beyond, uh, which is acceptable. Um, so, Malachi three ten. If I may direct your attention, Malachi three ten. Let's take a look. This is the one that we're going to have memorized before we die, because we're going to read it every week. It's because this is the backbone. This is the foundation for giving in the church you know there's a lot of stuff in here about giving about offering and, and so forth and so on but this is the one that focuses on tithe the tithe the tenth of the income that you have it's your increase you know my mama you somebody give her a pie she'd cut out a tenth of it and give it away as a tithe that's a little bit further down the road right now we're just focusing on your on your finances your increase uh, that God gave you God blesses us through our jobs, through our retirement, through our inheritance, through gifts from people. He blesses us many different ways. And he requires us to bring him, give him back a tenth, the tithe of what he gives us. And that's to be in obedience to him. And as you will see here when we read about it, it opens the windows of heaven to pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Oh, yes, Lord. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. You know, you could say, well, I can do that. 
but you can't do it all the time because that sneaky old devil is working behind the scenes and he's trying to jack you up and you can't you don't know what's going on but God does and he will rebuke the devourer for your namesake as well as yourself that's why he gives us the authority to do that in in the word he gives us the authority to bind and to loose Matthew 16:19 there's actually two places Matthew 18 and 18 he talks about I give you the keys the keys is the authority to bind and loose to bind whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven he gives you that authority that's where you fight the enemy you fight him in the spiritual realm before he gets to your to you your family your household your money take care of him in advance and God's taking care of him in advance as well so let us read the text <clears throat> excuse me Malachi 3 10 and 11 bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house that's God talking to you bring the tithes to the storehouse so that there may be meat in my house that's food believe it or not in my house it's also so there's food in your house because if you don't live according to his word obey him you might find yourself on the short end of the stick instead of the long end of the stick okay bring your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts he's saying I'm challenging you put it down there and I'll prove you I'll prove you I will prove you I will bless you back alright bless your socks off some of y'all, I know some of y'all can like that. I like it too. Bless my socks off, Lord. It happens. It happens. Man. Man. Okay. Lord of hosts. If I, and then he goes on to say, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive, don't you want the windows of heaven blessing you? Or do you want just some little drop in the bucket? You know, not enough. We live in the time of more than enough. We serve a big God. We serve an almighty God. We serve a God that has more than enough, who gives us favor, rebukes the devil, and provides for us, protects our children, our families. He does it all. But you got to be in obedience to Him and His Word. Okay. Not enough room to receive it. Okay, get that one. Imagine that one. Put that one in there. You know, we're talking about imagination on our Wednesday night classes. What did they say it was? Your spiritual womb is your imagination. And all you got to do is add a little faith to it. And guess what? Stuff starts happening. But it starts in your imagination. We're going to finish. We'll get to that later. We're going to finish that lesson up this week and move on to something else. So, okay. Not enough room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. That's the devil. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. That's your food. Neither shall the vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. That's the grapevine. Saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, with that said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now you've heard it. That is the foundation of of giving, tithe, uh, and and opening the windows of heaven and and the blessings that come with it, the favor of God before you, behind you, all around you. It's it's there. And I know y'all experience it. I experience it. I know y'all experience it. I know y'all are faithful. And it's just all around you. It's all around you. It's all around you. It's before you. It's behind you. It's God's favor. It goes before you. Them angels are rebuking those devils that are trying to trip you up as you walk down the road. But he takes care of it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. So let me go ahead and zip zip it up. Y'all, please bring your tithing offering and put it in the basket right there. We'll pray over it and we'll move on, move on to the next thing, which would be announcements. We got announcements. We got to keep you informed as to what's going on around this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, prove yourself. Prove yourself according to your word. It says right here that you'll pour out a blessing. There shall not be room enough to receive. It says right here 
Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Show everybody. Show them again, Lord. Show them when they are faithful and they give their 10% how you bless them back. How you open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing they cannot receive. Let me go ahead and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is where we enter into the spirit realm. We're in the natural realm over here, but this is the spirit realm. This is where you do business. This is where things show up, good and bad, on this end. You don't want to deal with it over there. You want to deal with it over here and rebuke that enemy and thank the God that you serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the blessings, the money, the jobs, the income, the sources of those income that we may give tithe because it all comes from you. And by the way, if you need seed to plant, if you need money to give to bless people, all you have to do is ask and he'll give it to you. Hallelujah. The word says that. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you and praise you. Bless these offerings, tithes. Bless the giver. Show them. Prove it now and to rebuke that devourer and open them windows of heaven and pour out that blessing that they cannot receive. Show them, Lord. Show them. Show them your word is true in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now let's take a look at some announcements. Um, let's see what we got here. Bum, 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 bum. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay, announcements. So let's take a look at this right quick. Announcements, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Hallelujah. Visit us online at vclockhart.com. That's our website. You can go there and look at and see what's going on around here. You can pay your tithe on there, give offering, whatever you want. Okay, Wednesday night Bible study, 7 p.m. We are currently studying the word, the power of the imagination. And if I'm not mistaken, this Wednesday will be the last day for that. Then we're going to move on to a new subject. But to uh, speak on power of imagination for a second, uh, it, it's, this is some serious stuff here. This is about as serious as tithing and offering is the imagination. God gives you an imagination. And in your imagination, you can dream dreams and you can think of things Oh, man, I'd like a new car. Hey, maybe one day I'll get married and have a family. You can dream these dreams, and you can think of them in your imagination. You can give birth to them. So it's in your imagination, your spiritual womb, that you add a little faith to it, and the next thing you know, things are happening. Things are happening. Things are happening in the mighty name of Jesus. So that you could catch the tail end of that and pick up on the conclusion of this very powerful series. Uh, Wednesday night. Now, after that, come on back. We're going to move on. But first, let me conclude these announcements. We all, on Wednesday, we also have classes for the youth and the children at 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday, we have English service at 9, Spanish service at 11. Okay, that's the announcements. What I wanted to add was... Um, after next week, we're going to start a new study of the Word. And I say that because it's all video-based. It's not, you know, we're not sitting here digging through the Word. But although we do look at our Bibles and we are going, it's all based on Scripture. Uh, it's, it's a video. It's Andrew Womack, to be exact. Uh, the studies that he has put out. The next one is going to be the faith of God. Faith of God is very good. It's very interesting. It's not very long, so if you want to be part of this, it's coming up. Be thinking about that. It's only mm, it's only a couple of weeks worth of materials, and it would take us about five weeks to cover that. But it's a short one, so be thinking about that. If you want to get in some, you want some of that, you want a couple of scoops of that ice cream. You don't 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 snooze, you'll lose. Okay. After that, I mentioned this a little while ago. A study on praise. We have one, and we'll do that after this one. You remember the word that we looked at? And um, we talked about praise, praising God. Bless 
Oh, bless our God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise be heard. We're going to study about praise. That's another one that you may want to be part of and learn a little something extra here about how important is praise to God. You know, where do you fit in? You know, you don't have to be a, a, a opera singer to praise God. All you have to do is open your mouth. You could read the sign on the wall here, I praise you, Lord. Kind of like a rapper, not singing, but speaking. I praise you, Lord. I love you, Lord. That's it. Or you could sing, I love you, Lord. Try to put a little something, something to it. I'm not an opera singer, but God doesn't want an opera singer. He wants a willing heart, a willing heart. Right there sits a willing heart. She may not be a professional keyboard player, but she will sing all week long and come down here on Sunday prepared to sing praises to God. And she does her best, and that's all God wants is somebody who's got a willing heart. Do you have a willing heart? You need to get one. You need to get one. You need to get one because it's important to God. Right here, bless, O God. O bless our God, ye people. Make the voices of his praise heard. It wouldn't be in the word if it wasn't important. It's important to God that you open your mouth and you sing his praises. You pray to him. You know, your prayer, power of prayer, that's where things happen. Like I was saying about the spirit realm and the natural realm, that's where things happen. It's when you pray to God, when you reach out to him. Oh, Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I pray. He hears you. He's only right here. He can't help but hear you. So anyhow, let me move along. I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to teach and pass on some information to you. And that's it about the, our, our upcoming classes. Now, consider them and, and um, make it important. Make it a priority on your uh, things to do. Come to church on Wednesday night. You know, we used to go to a church where they shut down on Wednesday nights. We're like, oh, wrong place. I got to get out of here. I don't want less of God. I want more of God. More of God in my life. Not less. Less is bad. More is good. It's kind of like money. More money is good as long as you got Christ in the center of your life and it doesn't rule you. More is good. So let me shut up and move on because we have a wonderful message coming to you from Pastor Sally here in just a few minutes. Let's see. Do we have kids to dismiss today? Do we have something going on? Okay. Uh, so your kids can be dismissed at this time. Uh, and um, go learn something. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Prepare your hearts and your minds for communion. It's coming up. And also for the word, it's, it's here. It's here. It's here now. And if you will, put your hands together and welcome Pastor Sally as she comes to deliver the word. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing this morning? Can y'all give me a smile? <laughs> doing great. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad you're here and not in some fancy hospital somewhere? <laughs> it's good to be here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's been, it's been a great uh, year that we left behind, and we're expecting a better year this year. Amen. Then we're still expecting good things to happen, and right. and uh, you haven't seen nothing yet. Right. Yeah, the best is yet to come. Amen. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Uh, this morning, my message is kind of short. Um, it might be short; just depends how long I can talk. Um, it's kind of short, but I was thinking that maybe we can encourage one another, and maybe if you have a testimony of what happened to you last year. Um, we, um, in the previous year, this year, we were kind of focusing on transforming our minds to line up with the word of God. And, and we were focusing on being committed to the Lord. And so something along those lines or, or just any testimony, something that the Lord, um, got you through in 2023 and you just want to give them praise and honor and by, and by sharing and encouraging the others. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give a little time for that. And of course, then we have, um, communion. So prepare our hearts. Like brother Tony said, anybody watching us online, prepare your heart. You can do communion with us, get you a cracker or a piece of bread or something and some juice or whatever you have to drink, water, whatever. 
and we will do that. Our only requirement to take communion is that you are saved, that you have accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let's pray and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning that you have made. Father, we thank you for just another year, Father. Father, we're so grateful and we're so honored to be here in your presence, Father, together as a family, Lord, to love you, to worship you, Father, to honor you, to exalt you, Father. And Lord, I just uh, surrender, Father, that you would use my eyes, ears, voice, vocal cords, everything, Father, that I just, you would just use me, Father, I would sur I surrender all. And Father, I pray for everyone here that they would prepare their heart, Father, to receive a word from you, Father. You have a word for each one of us this morning. I pray that our spiritual eyes, our spiritual ears, our, our, our hearts would be open, Father, to receive what the Spirit of God has for each and every one of us. And we just thank you, Lord, and we honor you, and we glorify you, and we give you all the honor, Father, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Well, today I titled my message, Are You a Gatekeeper? You might be thinking, what is a gatekeeper? Um, while we were on, uh, I guess, holiday or vacation, we, we were watching a movie. And um, the movie uh, was called, what was it called? Holiday in the Wild, right? Holiday in the Wild. We were uh, in California and, you know, trying to, one night we, the kids were busy, so we were trying to find something to watch, and they had Netflix. I don't recommend Netflix. You have to sort through a whole bunch of movies before you can find something decent to watch. That's not terrible. But we found this movie, and it was about, it was, it was a couple, right, the, uh, a uh, husband and wife, and the wife had a, wanted to surprise her husband for for Christmas, and and she bought him a vacation, and it was a vacation to Zambia, and it was going to be a honeymoon, you know, a, an anniversary, and so they're they're going to celebrate um, Christmas, and the son is going off to college, so it was they were going to be empty nesters. And right before Christmas, when she, before the Christmas came about, the husband tells, tells his wife that, that he doesn't love her anymore and, he, and he's leaving her. And so that was going, that's sad, right? <laughs> so then her friends encouraged her to go ahead and take the holiday, the, the honeymoon package that she had already paid for. So she goes on this safari, is, is to go to a safari. And she goes on, on, on this journey. And, of course, uh, she, she meets... A uh, young man, right? And so you always have, you know, a leading lady and a and a young man. It's a love story. It's like a romantic comedy, you know, it's drama. It's got everything in it. And so she ends up going to to the resort where she was going to go, but in the middle of going toward, you know, she had to go by airplane to this safari. But they made a pit stop because the guy that was driving her in this plane, he, w he worked for, for a company that rescued elephants. And he noticed an elephant, and he went down there, and the elephant, you know, they had taken his uh, uh, husk, and, you know, they used that for ivory, right? So he stops, and they rescue this animal, and they come and take it, this company, you know, this truck comes and takes them. And they come to find out she's... Uh, a veterinarian. So she falls in love with the elephant and she goes to the camp and she ends up spending her time at the camp. And with this leading man, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they, in the end, they fall in love. And after a year, or so many years, they end up getting married. But during the camp, it's a big camp and they just have little cabins all around. And he's showing her the camp where she's going to stay, and she could hear the roaring lions, you know, roaring out around the camp. And she's like, oh, my God, there's, there's nothing to, how do you keep the lions out of the, to coming into the camp? And you could just see, hear all the roaring. And then he goes, there's a guy keeping watch. There's a gatekeeper. There's a, a watchman. And so he's watching, and he's watching to make sure that these lions don't come into the camp. And so at that moment, I thought of 1 Peter 5.8, which it says, Be sober, be vigilant, 
because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Amen? Where there's, a, there's an enemy out there that's just roaring around wanting to devour you. And we need to be alert and we need to be aware that it, it, there's this force that we're fighting against. It's not people. We're not fighting against people but we're fighting against powers and principalities and, and dominions and might, right? Uh, the, the influence, the enemy influence on people, which causes people to, to react or to be mean or to, you know, to want to steal from you, want to, you know, just be um, trying to, to make you fall in some way. Amen? So we need to be aware. So it made me think about gatekeepers. What is a gatekeepers? Gatekeepers are, are mentioned often in scripture and gatekeepers were an important part of maintaining order in ancient society. And if you read through the Bible, you, you've read stories and I'm gonna share a few here with you. Gatekeepers were guards that were stationed for protection at various kinds of gates. There were there were gates, city gates, there were palace gates, temp, uh, temple gates. Ancient cities had these high, thick walls that would, would be around the city, and they were built up so they would keep the wild animals, the road, those roaring lions and wild dogs and everything to keep them out of the city, and also uh, to protect the people that were within those gates. And if, if you've seen, um, if you see pictures of ancient Jerusalem, you can see those, those walls and those gates. Amen? And if you read the Bible and use your imagination, <laughs> you can be right there and see them. Amen? Amen? Heavy gates were set within those walls to allow entrance to the, and to the city. So there was these thick walls all around the cities, and then there were these big gates which were guarded by the gatekeepers. Amen? The gatekeeper had to be trustworthy and alert for any sign of trouble. The gatekeeper, if he was careless or if he was negligent in his duties, it could ruin the whole entire civilization that lived within those gates. Amen? So the idea of gatekeeping implies alertness and security. Amen? Amen? We need to be alert and we need to be secure. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to go to Joshua chapter 7 and verse 5. And first, um, in Joshua 6, well, let me read you the scripture and then I'll tell you the story so you know where we're at. Joshua 7, 5, it says, And the men of Ai struck down about 37 men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Cher Cherubim, and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. In other words, their hearts fainted, it says in, in another scripture. They, were, they became fearful or afraid. Okay, so let me go back to chapter 6. If you go in uh, Joshua chapter 6, you're going to read about the destruction of Jericho. And we all know that story, right? Amen. And so what, what I got from this story is that nothing can keep you from having what belongs to you. Amen? Because Jericho was promised to Israel, right? And they had this big gate that they couldn't get through and they kept it real shut and tight because the people living in Jericho were afraid of Israel because they had heard how God helped them when they left Egypt. So they knew the story about how they were conquering and they were coming. They were a mighty power and they were afraid. So they made sure that they kept their gates nice and tight where nobody could come in. Amen? And so they were keeping Israel out. But what happened? They, the Lord told, told the Israelites what to do. Remember, they march around 
six days around Jericho, six days one time, and on the seventh day they, they march around seven times and they blow their horn, and what happens? The whole wall comes down. Amen? And then they are able to go in there, and they conquer this city. Amen? So in the city of Jericho is a representative of sin. Everything that was in there needed to be destroyed. The Lord told him to destroy everything. And that sounds like a mean and, and mad God, but that's the only way God dealt with sin in the Old Testament. He had to destroy everything, right? So it was even children, animals, everything. He said, just keep the gold, the silver, and, and you know, the, for the temple. Everything else was to be destroyed, and so they have this, you know, they, they conquered it, so they had a great victory. And um, also there was a lady there who is, who is it? Rahab, right? When um, Joshua had sent two spies to go into Jericho to check out the city. And so Rahab helps them, right? She hides them. We remember that story. She hides them, and then she, she asked that they... That they would not be destroyed when they come in and destroy um, Jericho. So they kept their promise because she helped the people of Israel. So they helped her. So her and her family, her father's family, everybody was saved. So they go in there and they make sure they grab, get Rahab and get all her family out of the city before they destroy everything. And everything was destroyed by fire. Amen. And so... We've got, when we get to chapter 7, now they've had this great um, conquer. They've conquered Jericho. It's a great thing, so they're celebrating. And then in chapter 7 here, they're told to go to Ai and conquer Ai, right? And so it's, a, it's not a, a big force like Jericho is. It was a, a smaller force. And so they're going up to Ai, and what happens? They get destroyed. And then uh, Joshua was saying, Lord, what happened? But what had happened is there was a guy named Achan, and when, when they um, destroyed Jericho, he took some things out of Jericho. Remember? He took, he, he took some Babylonian garments. He took some gold and silver, and he hid it in his, in his tent. He hid it with his things. And so he brought some of that, he brought sin into his camp, into the, sin, into the camp of the Lord. And so there was sin in their camp. So when they went to fight this battle, they didn't win because, because of that sin. Amen? So y'all remember that story? Amen. Okay. And so then, this... So he has that sin, and, and that's sometimes what happens to us, that we want to live and have things. We'll covet things of the world, and we want those things, and we want to live like the world. And then, and then, um, and then we're trying to conquer all the silver and gold. We're trying to work all the time so that we can um, accumulate all that the world has for us. Amen? This was a worldly city. It was full of sin. It was supposed to be destroyed. They, weren't, they were supposed to con not take the, uh, conquer the city, but not take anything. And he stole from the th articles that were supposed to go into the temple, and he took some things for himself that he shouldn't have had. Amen? Amen. So a lot of times we do that ourselves as well. Amen? Well, we want to do what the world does, and our gate of protection is lifted. We open the door to the enemy by coveting and chasing after riches, and, and we forget about the Lord. Amen. We've had some families that, you know, they come in, and they want to be prayed for. They need a job, and we'll pray for them to get work, and then we never see them again. And you find out they've been working all the time, and they're working and working, and they forget about the Lord at least to come back and give them thanks that, that the Lord gave them a job. Amen? And so then we see them struggling, and, you know, we're still following some people, and we see them struggling, but they, they've forgotten and who they should put their trust in. 
Don't put your trust in your job. Don't put your trust in the things of the world. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Trust him. Amen. And trust the word of God. Like I said, nothing can keep you from having what belongs to you. If God says it's yours, it's yours. Amen. Amen. And every promise in the word of God belongs to us. Amen. So we need to know what our promises are and stand on those and apply them to our lives. Amen. And be strong in that. Thank you, Lord. So here's another story. We go to Judges chapter 4 and chapter 5. In chapter 4, and I like this story. You all need to go back and read these stories. If you want to watch a good movie, read the Bible. Because as you read the Bible, you picture, picture the story. Because that's the way you're going to remember it, right? Because you can watch novellas or you can watch a good movie. Like I just explained this movie that I saw. And, and you'll remember it and you can tell somebody else about it. Right? I'll go, Peggy, look, I watch, I'm watching this show, and it's this, this, and this, and you can follow it. And so when you read the Bible, if, if you see the, the movie, and, and you, you have to be visual, if you're visual, that'll help you remember the stories. But here in Judges chapter 4 is the story of Deborah. And I like this story. I like, um, you know, when, when we've had men come into this people mostly men, <laughs> that say that women can't minister. And I said, to me, is those people don't know their, their word, right? Because there's a whole book, you know, in Judges, it talks about Deborah. There's a whole book named after a woman, Ruth, right? And in the Old Testament, there were a lot of women that were powerful instruments that the Lord used, you know? And... I could tell you later what happened and why they were so second class in the New Testament. But they were never meant to be second class citizens. The Lord is no respecter of persons, and he will use anyone. Now, Deborah, she was a prophetess. She was a judge. She was the first judge to judge Israel. They didn't have kings at that time. And she was also a military leader. She was a warrior. And so it says that Deborah used to uh, judge under a tree. She didn't have an office or a fancy desk or anything. She, she, she judged under a palm tree. And so people would come to her. And they were living in a time where it was so dangerous that they, the people couldn't, um, you know, go down the main roads. They had to take back roads because um, Israel had... Um, was taken captive by a king, I think was his name, King Jabin of Canaan. And so they were captive, and they were treated real badly for 20 years, and they were under this king because they, they, they forgot about the Lord. You know, throughout uh, Old Testament, you see how the people of Israel, they were supposed to take the gospel to the next generation. And they would get, you know, some victories and, and be all gung-ho about the Lord. And then they would drop off and they would forget to pass it on. And so they kept, uh, so the Lord, you know, kept dealing with them and dealing with them. And, you know, and so here is one of these times that, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, so they were kept captive under a king of Canaan named Jabin. Amen? And Jabin had a commander, and his name was Sisera. Okay? So Israel cried out to the Lord and for help. And they said, you know, they said, uh, Jabin has 900 chariots of, fi- of iron, you know. So, so you can imagine this this big army right because the chariot there were several men on the chariots and they would go and they have all this equipment on them or you know they even had blades on their wheels sometimes I'll I don't like to watch the movies of of all these big armies when the you know, movies that show all this fighting and but I'll sit and watch a little bit when my husband's watching them and you've seen some of those chariots if you've seen some of those movies you see they're all loaded up and there's several men on them so they had a, a big army Right? So Deborah 
was under this tree and she's judging and there comes this guy named Barack, not Obama, but Barack <laughs> comes to her and, and she prophesies to him. And when someone prophesies to you, usually it's something that you already know and it's confirmation. It could be more than that, but that's one of the points. So Barack comes to her and he said, has not the Lord told you, you know, to take an army and, and go fight and get these people out, right? And so he tells uh, Deborah, he goes, yes, I'll go, but I'm not going to go without you, right? That sounds familiar, that Moses would not go into the, without Jesus, right, to, to deliver the people from Egypt. So she goes, okay, I'm going to go with you. I'll go with you. Remember, she, she's a military leader. She's a warrior. You know, you can picture that woman that we have a picture of that she's all dressed in armor, She's a warrior. And so she goes, I will go with you. But you know what? You're not going to get all the honor when we win. Because they were going in to win. They weren't going, you know, they had the Lord with them. They were going to win. She goes, you're not going to get any honor. There's going to be a woman that's going to get the honor. Now, she didn't say it was going to be her. She just said, there's a woman that's going to get the honor. All right? So they go to war. Amen? And in Judges 5, 8, in chapter 5, it's, a, it's just a song. Because after they go to war, of course they win, right? And how they win is they defeated the army. But the commander, Sisera, he escapes and he runs. And he comes to a house of a lady named Jael. Her husband's not home, but he comes to her door and he's looking, and she, she opened the door, she knew who he was, they evidently knew each other, and, and she lets him in, and he goes, he's, he's running, she knows what's going on, and he says, if anybody comes looking for me, you tell them I'm not here, and they ask you, are you here, you say no, and so she brings him in, he goes, give me some water, and she ends up giving him some milk, and then he lies down, and she's being real nice to him, and she covers him up and everything, and, you know, he's resting because he's hiding and he's the only one left from this army. And so while he's resting, she takes a tent peg and he na he hammer she hammers it through his temple and kills him. So Jael, a woman, killed the commander of the king's army. Amen? So she's the woman that ends up getting the honor for, for conquering the army, for, for getting the leader. Amen? Amen? And that was the woman that, that Deborah had prophesied. And so here in Judges 5.8, it says, They choose new gods. Then there was war in the gates, because they went up to the gate to fight, to, to get into Ai. Not a shield or a spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. Here Deborah is singing and she's saying that out of 40,000 people that lived in Israel at that time, there was no weapons. No weapons whatsoever. Not one spear. So how did they fight? The army that had 900 chariots. Right? So, and there was only, if you read the story, there was only 10,000 people that they found to, to, to go fight. So 10,000 people out of 40,000 and no, no, no weapons. So the 10,000 who followed Deborah and Barak had to use tools or whatever they could find to fight. So the children of Israel fought, but who gave them the victory? God gave them the victory. Amen? Amen. We fight our battles but God gives us a victory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> First Corinthians 3, 7 says, Neither he who plants anything or, or he who waters gains anything, but God is the one who gives the increase. You know, it doesn't matter who we minister to. We might min be ministering for the first time or who um, we're speaking to or encouraging. You know, we might be watering what the, somebody else planted a seed. And it doesn't matter if we're the planter or we're the waterer. What matters is that God is going to increase 
that person and increase you as well. Increase us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we need to be working and bringing people into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord. That's a good story, isn't it? Amen. That's an awesome story. And, and how amazing God is. Can you imagine a, a humongous, humongous army and 10,000 men with no, with no tools, no, no weapons, and probably no armor, you know, because they were, they, were, um, they, they were in captivity under this king. And so anyway, they win, their, they win and this whole uh, Judges chapter 5 is a victory song. If you read it, it's a whole, it's a song. The whole chapter is a song. And it's exactly what Brother Tony was saying. They were just speaking. Maybe they were singing it, but there were just words that were coming out of her heart. She was praising God for helping them, and she's telling them, look, you know, all this happened. And, and then she, re she sings in there about the woman that they're giving honor to was Jael because she helped them win, you know. She, she got the main, it's like going and killing Bin Laden or who are we fighting against now? <laughs> Israel, the, the main guy, you know, she's the one that killed the commander in chief of that army. But isn't that amazing what God can do? If we do our part, then God does the supernatural. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I had Psalms 141.3 here. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And this scripture, the keeper of the gate, is the Lord himself. Yeah, we need God's supernatural help. Really, especially to tame our tongues because we can't do it in our own strength. We need the supernatural strength of the Lord in our lives. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In First Chronicles chapter 9, we're going to read verse 22 to 29. And in the whole book of Chronicles, well, in the beginning, I haven't read through the whole book of First Chronicles, but it's, it's a genealogy of from, from Adam to Abraham and then of the family of Israel. And so you'll read all that. And then on chapter 9, it gets to, it's talking about the Levites being the gatekeepers. And the Levites were always the, you know, the rabbis and the, the priests of the church and everything. They came out of the Levites. In verse 22, it says, all those chosen as gatekeepers were 212. 212 gatekeepers. They were recorded by their genealogy in, the villa in their villages. David and Samuel, the seer, had appointed them to their trusted office. So they and their children were in charge of the gates of the house of the Lord, the house of the tabernacle by assignment. The gatekeepers were assigned to be to the four directions, the east, west, north, and south. And their brethren and their villages had to come with them from time to time for seven days. So here, talking about rotating. For in this trusted office were four chief gatekeepers. They were Levites, and they had charge over the chambers and treasuries of the house of God. And they lodged all around the house of God because they had the responsibility and they were in charge of opening it every morning. Now some of them were in charge of serving vessels, for they brought them in and took them out by count. They kept inventory of it. Some of them were appointed over the furnishings and over the implements of the sanctuary and over the fine flour and the wine and the oil and the incense and the spices. Amen? So there were 1,212 gatekeepers to keep watch over the temple of the Lord. Amen. They were guarding the temple. So temple gatekeepers were in charge of who went in and who came out. They ensured order and reverence for God's house. And we are gatekeepers of our own temples, right? 
this is a temple of the Lord because you are the church. And so it's your temple. So we are gatekeepers of our physical temper, t temples. And we need to guard what comes in and what comes out of our temple. Amen? And it's the same thing with the church. The physical, this building. Amen? This building, we, we call it a temple as well or, or a sanctuary or a church. And some of you are in a position of trust as well because you have keys to the property you 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 have that we have that trust that you're protecting and taking care of the temple and, and we should always be um you know taking care of the things of the lord amen guarding our personal temple and the temple of the lord where we come together as a family to worship god amen thank you lord ezra chapter 2 and verse 42 it says the sons of the gatekeepers the sons of Shalom, the sons of Atter, the sons of Talman, the sons of Akabub, the sons of Hatidia, and sons of Shobai, 139 in all. Ezra recorded 139 gatekeeper, gatekeepers that made the trip from Babylon to Jerusalem with Zerubbabel. When Nehemiah had finished building the wall around the city of Jerusalem. Remember, Nehemiah um, uh, was was uh, armor bearer t or worked with the king, the king that's in Esther, the book of Esther. He was a king over, is it Judah? Because it, I know the Jews were under attack by this king. Esther, I forget his name, I can't. I have to see the word so I can pronounce it. But anyway, and so he's crying to, to, to this king, and the king allows him to go and rebuild the, the wall of Jerusalem because Jerusalem had been destroyed. So um, Jeremiah um, it is prophesied in Jeremiah, and then Nehemiah is the one that goes back, and he, he rebuilds this, this gate around the, uh, Jerusalem. And when he finished building the gate, then they said, all oh, the gatekeepers. That was the first thing they did. They appointed gatekeepers. In verse uh, Nehemiah 7, 1 says, Then it was when the wall was built, and I had hung the doors, the doors of the gate, whom the gatekeepers, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed. Amen? This is significant because the city cannot conduct business. It must protect from outside invaders first. The Lord's house requires gatekeepers for the same reason. Amen. We have to go about the business of the church. Before God's business could be conducted properly, only the prescribed priests and other designated servants could be allowed through the gates. God had given the clear command about temple business, and you can read about that in Exodus chapter 25 and Hebrews chapter 9. Gatekeepers were part of the holy business, and their positions were considered sacred. Amen. It's, it's, um, it's a big responsibility to be um, in charge of a church, and, to, and especially of your life, your own temple. Amen. Amen. Our gatekeeper is the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need the Holy Spirit in your life to be active and uh, uh, to be, to use. Amen. Amen. To, to be active when, because we have the Holy Spirit when we come to the Lord, but we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit because we need the Holy Spirit to help us and guide us through every day of our life. Amen. Amen. We need that power. We need that because the Holy Spirit's there to help you. He's your helper. He's your guide. He's going to guide you and direct you, and he's going, to, he's going to remind you of the Word of God. So if you're making re resolutions for 2024, add reading the Word of God. And if all possible, memorizing some scripture. Amen? Because when the devil comes to attack you, when, the, when you know you're up against the enemy, the first thing that should come out of your mouth is Word. Amen? Because that's what's going to give you the victory. The word of God is where you get victory. You have to speak that word. You have to know the word. You have to believe the word. 
Amen? We can't just know the word in our minds and, the ha- and know what the word says, but you have to believe it. And you have to trust that it's true. And you have to have, you have, to have the confidence, the guts, to tell people the truth of the word. Amen? Because there's a lot of people that, are, that don't want to offend other people. And you, you don't want to offend anybody, right? You want to, be, you want to show you're a loving person. But if you follow the, 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 um, the teachings of Jesus, he, he was straight out, right? He would tell people exactly what they were. He told the Pharisees that they were, you know, just, you know, whitewashed tombstones. And they're like dead bones, you know. And then the, all the people that were following him, he goes, why do you follow me? You know, is it because I can give you food or what I can give you? Or do you really love me? You remember? And they wanted to make him king, but he goes, why? Well, anyway, we need to speak the word with confidence and boldness, know it, and, uh, uh, and tell people the truth and not what they want to hear. And in today's society, we're, we're just going along with whatever the world's doing. You know, we're, we're not going by what the word says. Amen. We have to stand up for the truth of the word. You know, in all the confusion that's in the world today, you know, if you're talking to somebody that's confused or that doesn't believe in God, you say, where's the truth? The truth is in the word of God. Amen. And we need to know that word. So add that to your list of rev- resolutions. Need to know more of the word. Amen. But when we heed the warnings of the word and the Holy Spirit, we're safe. Amen. Because if we ignore our gatekeeper, we put ourselves and the people we love in jeopardy. When we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Because he's always, he's always there to take care of you and protect you. Amen. So we need to take heed to the word and the Holy Spirit so we can be safe. Our hearts and lives are protected from Satan's invasive schemes. Ephesians 6, 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the, of the d- devil. And it's not, the devil's not coming to hurt you. It's, he's more deceptive. And he works on your mind. And he's a deceiver and he wants to deceive you. Amen? And, and take control of your mind and make you believe things that aren't true. So you have to be aware of that. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Amen? Amen. So we need the word to protect us, to be uh, protect us from things outside, and to encourage us the in, in, from inside. Amen? When you come up against a difficulty, against a trial, a tribulation, remember, there's, there's, there's those waves. You know, there's great storms, and then there's great calm. I need some great calms right now. <laughs> but, and to always learn, you know, what, what, what am I going to learn from this trial that I went through? Lord, what, what, what am I missing you know, where do I need, you know, to close the gap? Or maybe, you know, maybe there's something I, I you know, I need to be um, doing that I'm not doing. And, you know, after what happened to us this last quarter, um, I started thinking, you know, I started analyzing the end of the year. Okay, where have I learned? Where am I? Am I this much farther? How much farther am I? And um, I was remembering that the Holy Spirit had warned me because I had dreams of people stealing my purse. And I would see a bunch of cash in my purse, and I, would, I was having dreams that they were taken. Okay, the Lord was, was warning me, but at this point, and I usually write everything down, and I, every dream and everything, because the Lord is always talking to us. The Holy Spirit is always talking to us. We're the ones that don't listen. (laughs) And if you listen to that gatekeeper, which is your Holy Spirit, and it brings to your memory scripture, 
or, it, or, or you have a dream that you can't shake, you need to start figuring out what's it trying to tell me. Because some, the, it's the Lord speaking to you. And sometimes you might say, oh, it's my intuition, woman's intuition. It's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Or, or oh, you get a thought, oh, you know, that just might be me thinking it. No, a lot of times it's the Holy Spirit. It's God speaking to you, and we need to listen. And so I was thinking, what, what did I miss? Where, where did I miss this? And so, so far I'm thinking I needed to pay more attention, you know, uh, protect um, information better than, than I was doing, you know, and uh, pay attention and, and have all those gaps closed because I, I'm believing God's going to pour out a blessing greater than, like the word says, that we can't contain. And if you can't handle it, it's not going to do you any good. You know how some people, they win the lottery, and then the next day they're, they're out on the street because it's too much for them to handle, and they don't know how to handle it. So there's great things coming, and we have to be prepared for those things. But we have to listen to the Holy Spirit that's guiding us and, and leading us. And we need to follow through. Like, I, I didn't do it perfectly, but now I'm, I'm paying more attention. Amen? So we have to, we have to, and our faith grows. And it's good, this study coming up of the faith of God, it's going to be good. It's good because it's not your faith. It's the faith of God that is in us. You can't say, I need more faith. You have the faith of God in you. It's his faith. So you need to come, listen, get encouraged, get in your spirit, get a revelation that it's God's uh, faith that you have working in you, and you have to work it. Amen? And pay attention to the Holy Spirit. I should have learned a lesson after when I fell. <laughs> the Holy Spirit told me I was going to fall, and I held on for long enough, but I didn't keep guard for the rest of the day. I just thought it was going down the stairs. And it wasn't just going down the stairs. It's, it's around the corner, you know. So we need to be alert. We need to be our own gatekeepers. Right. Amen? Amen? Keep keep guard of our heart. Keep guard what we let in. Keep guard of what we let out. And we need to be about the Lord's business. Amen? Because we, we need to bring people into the kingdom of God. And then what's in here, you know, train them up, uh, you know, encourage them, build them up so that they can go out and and be their own gatekeeper and, and grow in the Lord and reach others. Reach one and one can reach another and we go on and on. The Bible tells us that we do be about the Lord's business until he comes. Amen. Amen. He's coming soon and we see all the signs around us. So we need to be more diligent because the enemy is coming out stronger and harder because he knows his time is short amen so we need to be prepared okay so that was my message we've got a little time before we do tithes and offering if anybody uh wants to testify um now's your time <laughs> what has the lord what did the lord do for you in 2023 that you're so just grateful for and yeah, just, uh, come, on come on come on down <laughs> there we go look out now <laughs> all right everybody it's good to see everyone uh oh look at there i see I see Sally's mama back there. Good <laughs> to see early. you, sister, always. And Leonard's wife, good to see you always. You know, there's a visitor among us today, and y'all be sure to go tell him hi and give him a good old handshake and welcome him to our, our family, our church. Anyhow, I'm supposed to tell you what God did for me this year. I don't know. <laughs> Not one thing. But I do know he has blessed me from January 1st to December 31st. Thank you, Lord. Coming and going. 
And that's all there is to it. I mean, he just blesses us, blesses us, blesses us, blesses us. We went to the conference in Colorado, the pastor's conference at Andrew Womack. Hey, that's a major blessing. You go up there and listen to the word for four or five days, and you you got to have a profound effect in your life, <laughs> or you ain't, you, you ain't alive. <laughs> We've done so much. I mean, these are just worldly things. We went to the beach a couple times. Man, we go down there and have a good time like a king's kid. <laughs> uh, we live in prosperity. God just keeps blessing us, blessing us, blessing us financially. Uh, Oh, the foundation. Yeah, we had a big old foundation problem. Kept putting it off. Didn't have 15 grand to go sink into that. But guess what? God did. Amen. God did. That foundation has been fixed a long time ago. God had it. He just blesses us and blesses us and blesses us. It's not just one little thing. I mean, we have a family. We have growing kids that are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, it's just one his thing after the away. other, after the other, after the other. <laughs> there is no limit to his blessing in our lives. So there's not just one little thing. It's just everything, everything, every Thank day Lord. he's blessing us Thank and Lord. blessing us and blessing us. He brought us here. This was a blessing in our lives, just being here. When we came here, we said, Holy Ghost, show us where to go. We came. This the first, we had a list. We're going to go to a couple places. This is the first one we went to. We didn't have to go any further. We felt <laughs> like God. we were at home. We had family. We'd, we'd known the pastors from, as well as other people, from other church experiences. And we said, man, it feels like family over here. Well, it is. Half the church is related to Pastor Sally. <laughs> And it is family. It's our church family. But anyhow, I don't want to sit here and go on and on and on. I know someone else wants to get up and tell a little story. But just God just blesses us, blesses our socks off. Come on now. Mm -hmm. All the time, every day. It's just blessing, 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 coming and going. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, brother. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Come on now. That's good. Come on, encourage. <clears throat> no. Come to come tell us what he did for you. I know he did a lot for all of us. I know how um how long has Bryson been healed? A year? One? Um a little great nephew been healed from cancer for over a year. Make sure you keep it. We're in a new year, and God's going to bless us through the new year. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to say that God has blessed me with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Not one little thing, but big things. Thank you, Lord. God has blessed me last year with two more grandchildren. Yes, God. <laughs> and to me, it's a blessing. To my daughter, it's a big blessing. Amen. Amen. But... Uh, I just want to say that God is good. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we think that we're not doing right. Like the sister said, the Holy Spirit comes and convicts you. And But anyway, he's, he's there for us. And he blesses you. Amen. Not right away, but in time. Amen. And coming back to my grandchildren... it was the beginning of the year I had a dream like that Mana says that I was walking and that I was carrying a little child and I didn't know what it meant I already had two granddaughters but then <clears throat> I used to pray for my daughter to get her two little babies what she desired in her life Though so they made me a grandmother in my late 60s. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I had seven sisters, and they were all grandmothers in their 40s. I was the only one that was in my 60s that I became a Thank grandmother. But anyway, that was a blessing. I just want to say that God is good. Amen. Amen. You know? Hallelujah. <clears throat> and, uh, I remember 
when he got me out of the pit. Thank you, Lord. Bless me. Thank you, Father. And I always, I always invite people to church. Like Brother Pastor says, bring people to church. That's I right. always invite people. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We teach, we hear the word of God, and they say, "Oh yeah, we'll we'll go. We'll, we'll see us there." Nowadays, the, the Lord is getting closer. Yes. Amen. And I say, all these people, they don't know what's coming. Mm -mm. And I thank God for, 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 for him to, for, for me, that he saved me. Like I said, he got me out of the pit. Thank you, Lord. And from then on, he's been saving me. Little things, a lot of things, big things. Not right away, but then I see him. And that's all I want to say, that he's been good. Amen. He's been good to me. No matter Amen. what, he's been good to me. He has blessed me. And I bless you all, brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you, hermana. Thank you, Lord. Yeah? No. No. It takes some. Yeah, that's on. Yeah. Well, grandmothers are always you know, happy for their grandkids, and uh, Jennifer has two beautiful twins, or twins, a boy and a girl, that was a great blessing. Sister Joanne has new grandchildren, too, this year. Hallelujah. We're all proud grandmas. We're like you, hermana, we, we started late. My husband was, we we're, were grandparents late. My brother's one year older than me, just one year older than me, and he's already a great grandfather. <laughs> and I'm just getting started with my grandchildren. <laughs> but grandchildren are a blessing. Anybody else just want to say how good the Lord is or has been? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Lord, Lord. Jesus. Preach it. Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of things to say thank you. Amen. Amen. I've been a blessed Every day, every Thank day, you. every time I wake up, there's a blessing. And this year, let me tell you something, guys. It's going to be more blessings for you. Thank the only you, thing we have to do is just believe. Yes. Believe. I know, Lord Jesus, you give me another year. Like right now, look, there's beautiful people in here. And the ones who watch it in line too. Beautiful people with opportunity after chance and after chance this coming year I wanted you guys to stand up stand up and repeat with me I wanted you guys to repeat with me this year this year it's going to be my year it's going to be my year it's going to be a big victory it's going to be a victory because the victory is already paid the victory is already paid and I take it you go. Michael. Brothers and sisters, Kent we Richard. have a lot of things to say thank you. I'm a miracle, believe me. I'm a miracle. And I think, I believe everybody here, there's a miracle. Amen. Just to pass another year and there's something beautiful. And we got a lot of things to say. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you saved me. 2024. <laughs> And this year, I wanted you guys to take a, take advantage to say, hey, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take Thank the you. promises, the ones the Lord uh, uh, promised for me. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to put it on actions. Amen? Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Those of y'all that just came in, uh, we're taking testimonies. If y'all have a testimony, something that the Lord did for you in 2023, you want to share, encourage one another? Here, you have to come up here. <laughs> we need to hear it. We need to record it. <laughs> so I was watching the 700 Club. I don't know if some of y'all watched the 700 Club, but one morning I was, and, well, I've been watching it several times, waiting for my prayer to come up. And last week, or was it last week? It might have been the week, uh, Christmas week, because I was on the floor wrapping presents. Mm -hmm. And... I forgot the man's name, 
But they're praying, and he just says, somebody's on the floor right now, and you're suffering sciatica. God just healed you from that. I stood up, and I said, that's me. It's gone, <laughs> and it's been gone. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. That's awesome. Yeah. Anybody else? We don't want to take your... We don't want to leave you out. I know everybody has a good story. Because I know all the stories. But they're not mine to tell. <laughs> but God knows them. So without further ado, if y'all want to come up, we're going to do um, communion this morning. If anybody watching us online, you've never accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, that's our only requirement uh, that you could take communion. You need to have accepted the Lord as your Lord and Savior, and you want to take communion where you're watching us. Um, if you would just repeat after me. Um, <clears throat> it, the Bible tells us that we need to confess, believe, and receive. Amen? Amen. So just follow this plain, it's a simple prayer, and just say, Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that you came to save me. You died on the cross for me. You were buried and resurrected on the third day. I believe in you, Father. I receive you as my Lord and Savior right now in the name of Jesus, and I thank you, Lord for saving me. Amen. Thank you for saving me. It's that simple. You just receive God. You confessed it with your mouth. And now we consider it. We believe you're saved. If you said it with your heart and you believe it, if you will uh, drop us a line through our website at bclockhart.com, we would like to uh, send you a book that's called The New You and the Holy Spirit. And it will give you more information about what you just accomplished. And also, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that's a separate prayer, but it's, it's just even more simple. Just ask God, God, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. And then receive it. Thank you, Lord, for baptizing me. I receive it in Jesus' name. And we believe that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And this book is going to give you more information about that. And then we... I uh, want to welcome you, first of all, to the body of Christ, to, to be our brother and sister. And also get into a good Bible teaching uh, church that will teach you about the Word of God and encourage you. Thank you. And encourage you and build you up. Amen. And if you live in our area and you don't have a place and you're looking around, consider Vision Church of Lockhart. We're here to welcome you with open arms and to love on you and help you grow in your, in your walk with the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know the Lord's been good to you all this past year. And there's more to come. Thank you, Lord. The Word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20, 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we take our bread and we break it, Lord, as we remember you, Lord. We think about the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross, Lord. Fathers, we see with our imaginations, Father, you looking at us, Father, you see us. You're here with us and you see us, Father. You see each and every one of us. You know the thoughts of our heart and of our mind, Father. 
And Father, this morning we are so grateful for another year. We're so grateful for our salvation, for our healing, for our prosperity, Father. And we give you honor in all that we do, Father. And we bless this bread in the name of Jesus. And we take it now in the name of Jesus. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, asking, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. When you eat the bread, it's your healing. And when you take the cup, it's his blood that he shed for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless this cup, Father. We thank you, Lord. We take it, Father, remembering the sacrifice that you paid for us, Father. And we take it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're so grateful, Father, for, for what you've done for us in our life and that we're here for, for another um, year. And um, Pastor, you want to pray over people or just lay your hand on them and just bless them? Sandra, can you start from this side? Brother Tony, you start from this side. Just go by and lay hand and just give them a good God bless you and and move on, you know. And and if there's anything in their life the Lord knows and or they want to share with you, they can. Amen. Amen. And as soon as uh, that you've been prayed for, um, you'll be you can you'll be able to. You'll be dismissed. Sister Grace is going to be singing a blessing over us for this year. She's going to bless us for the year in the name of the Lord. Amen. And we're just going to be believing and praying for each one of y'all and thanking the Lord for you and giving thanks to God in all things. Amen.